Good morning, and welcome to worship as we gather here in the sanctuary of the Gray Memorial United Methodist Church and across your living rooms, dining rooms, and uh, other places across the countryside. Welcome to worship this morning. On this baptism of the Lord Sunday, as we remember the example of Christ, we pause during this hour to honor God with our presence and our worship together. For our call to worship this morning, I invite you to hear these words taken from the 29th Psalm. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord your strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of God's name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. May the Lord give strength to God's people. May the Lord bless the people with peace. And so we worship together with our first hymn this morning, the hymn, I Was There to Hear Your Morning Cry. I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, you have given Christ as a covenant to the nations, yet your people continue to live at war. Your prophets proclaim justice and peace, yet we dwell amid hostility and oppression. You judge your people with fairness we implore you, then, to have mercy upon us. Give sight to eyes that are blind to your truth. Enlighten our darkness that we may behold you even in the midst of our enemies. Free us from seeking your own grandeur so that in humility we may live at peace with your people. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
hear these words of assurance. The promises of God are still with us. As the prophet foretold, a servant is sent. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He knows our weakness. Trust the promises of God in Jesus Christ, for we are forgiven. Before our planned scriptures this morning, I want to read an additional uh, scripture in light of the events of this uh, last week in the nation's capital. This is from the other end of Jesus' life, from the one we've been celebrating these last uh, almost two months now, from the time of his betrayal. This is from Luke chapter 22, beginning with the 47th verse. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? And those who were were around him saw what was coming. They asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay your hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. I saw, as probably many of you saw, events this week in Washington, D.C. I never imagined seeing uh, as a riot stormed our Capitol building. It was hard to fathom what was happening, and even harder when I realized that amongst those that marched on the Capitol were were Christians. I know that... uh, We live in a time where a lot of feelings are raw, where many people have concerns about our government. I certainly have, uh, for years, wished that particular issues were addressed or addressed in different ways, as I know a great many of you have as well. And over the years, sometimes the candidates I vote for win, and sometimes they do not. But always, I think of myself, if I'm not on the prevailing side, as the loyal opposition or if I'm on the prevailing side, try to keep in mind some humility about the responsibility that uh, comes with any kind of office. As a Christian people, there's so much we can think about, I think, but three key pieces I want to leave with you this morning. One is by our principles, we who follow the Prince of Peace should condemn violence in any form Uh, It's not the way to advance a cause or to promote an idea or to have your voices heard. I think our experience this week has been just the opposite. Beside the loss of life, and at least five people now have have died, um, we've certainly had our sense of what is possible uh, torn apart, I think. The second is that we are all children of God. And those who see things differently are no less God's children. Some voices call these the enemies of the people. God calls them his children. We are called to look at each other with that same love that God looks at us. It isn't always easy. But sitting down together, working with our neighbors, whether they're your neighbors across the road, or your neighbors across the country is a crucial piece of living in community together. Um, And then finally, uh, in addition to 
all that is to remember God's injunction through Jesus that the Jews have repeated for centuries and we've inherited it as part of our own heritage to love your neighbor as you would yourself. Indeed, to love your enemies. For it is easy to love those who already like you. It is far harder to love those who do not like you. We've not seen that off model nearly often enough, but is what, what we are called as Christians to do. Even when it is, and maybe especially when, it is hard. Um, Naturally, I'm available to anyone who would like to have a conversation about these events, but I hope as a Christian person, you will seriously reflect on uh, these events and what it, kind of response a person of faith is to have. This will also fit in, I think, well with the theme that was already planned for today, our identity through our baptism. And our scripture reader for us this morning is Althea Wilcox, and she'll bring our first reading this morning. Good morning. Our first lesson today is from Acts 19, 1 through 7. And in this passage, the people in Ephesus didn't understand who has authority and under whose authority they do the mystery. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Our special music this morning is a piece titled Think About His Love, and it is presented this morning by Margaret Sear.
Our gospel lesson this morning is from Mark, chapter 1, 4 through 11. This gives an introduction to John the Baptist and then goes into Jesus' baptism. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to meet him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Would you be in a spirit of prayer with me, please? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Pastor Bob Kaler uh, described in, a, in an article this, that I read this week about a particular kind of art that really seemed to relate well to not only our present moment, but also this theme of baptism of the Lord Sunday. You might in English call it golden repair. What happens is that Japanese artists will take a piece of pottery that has been broken, often a very precious piece, and they will make this kind of repair. What they do is they'll mix a a lacquer resin with powdered gold, and then they use that resin as as a kind of glue to mend together the broken pieces. So what they end up having is a pot or a plate or another kind of pottery in which the cracks are filled with gold. They have a word for this. It's called kintsu kuroi. kuroi. So let me say that again. Kintsu kuroi. K-I-N-T-S-U-K-U-R-O-I. Kintsu kuroi, or golden repair. This kind of <clears throat> restoration creates a gorgeous piece of art. But it also has a message for us as well. Kintsukuroi makes the statement that breaking or having things broken and then being repaired is a normal part of life. And it's also a part of the history of, in this case, historical objects in the way it's traditionally applied, rather than as something we hide or pretend doesn't exist, which has so often been our own experience. We could use some golden repair in our lives because so often we hide it. Our own brokenness, our society's brokenness, our world's brokenness. And I don't say that as this, as a um, Debbie Downer looking to say everything about the world is wrong. There is a lot about the world that is good. I see it in you, and I see it in our community in many ways. But alongside that, I also see our humanness as well. Those times when we do not, or find we cannot, treat each other with the love that God has treated us. For those times when we look at our neighbors, whether near or far, 
and instead see, see something or someone to be afraid of or scared of, or even worse, some, something or someone to be destroyed. But when we hear their stories, when we hear the situation, if we think about our own touchstones, we can find connecting points. But it's hard to get past our own hurts, isn't it? If a friend hurts you deeply, we might retreat inside ourselves. If we lose a job or suffer a pay cut perhaps, and someone asks us how's it going, the odds are we will pretend that it's okay, or we're doing great, or everything's fine. If a spouse abuses us, we tend not to speak up. If we see someone having a drinking problem or have one ourselves, we feel too embarrassed to ask for help. In so many different ways, life can break us into pieces, often in ways that are hurtful or even painful. And too often we, rather than trying to repair the cracks or the broken pieces, we deny them. We disguise them rather than repair them. We hide them rather than seek to make what was once whole, whole again. For the early Christians, in the passage we heard from Acts today, Paul is traveling in Asia Minor and he comes to the people of Ephesus. And it's interesting that uh, in some of these travels, we hear of them in Acts, but not in Paul's own writings, um, which is one reason I think it's often helpful to have more than one source of these stories as we do in the Gospels in many cases. And he finds the people there in Ephesus talking about John's baptism, that is John the Baptist, the baptism that he proclaimed for the repentance of sins, and that is certainly significant, but he realized as he was talking with them that they were missing a key piece, which was Jesus' promise to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Where John had water, we have that and the Holy Spirit and the fire that goes with it. They had cracks in their understanding of how Jesus worked, much less in their own life, but struggled to see it. Paul at first can't understand it, and then he realizes that they haven't had the understanding he thought they did about baptism. You might say that he performed some golden repair, some kintsukuroi Christianity as Pastor Bob might have put it. So when the disciples there in Ephesus hear this, they decide to be baptized in Jesus. We've talked a lot about gifts over these last several weeks as we talk about the gift of Christ, the Emmanuel, God, Christ with us at Christmas. We talked about the gifts last week of the Magi coming from the East, recognizing what God had done, even though they were outsiders and strangers. And today, the gift of the Holy Spirit. In some ways, much more valuable than any gold we might have. And with the Holy Spirit, the gaps in our lives can be filled. The cracks can be repaired. The damage can be healed. Doesn't mean the cracks are gone. Uh, if you've had a cracked piece of pottery you've repaired, you know that it's still, you can still see the crack. It leaves its mark. Um, and we are changed by our experiences. but it's often beautiful in its own way. What might it be like if we had a greater sense of kintsukuroi Christianity in our own lives? Because 
if we're honest with ourselves, even the people that have, it seems, everything together and everything that life could possibly have still have gaps and breaks in their lives. Imperfections, places where they've fallen short, personal struggles, heartaches and burdens. Some of you indeed have been shattered by those experiences, not just with a nick or a crack here and there, but broken into what seems like a million pieces. And Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, comes to say, not only am I willing to help you put your pieces back together, I will be the glue that holds you together. I will take your hand and walk with you. Perhaps even Paul himself, because of those cracks, and this is, if you want to call it a silver lining or a, a helpful perspective, Paul could understand that brokenness himself. He had attacked early Christians. He knew what it was like to have his life turned around, which is the literal meaning of repentance, to turn. He knew what it meant to have golden repair, to have Jesus knitting him together again. And not only just so he could carry on, but so he could be a powerful witness to the change that God can do in our lives. So then Paul could talk about being weak in his own ways and being strong in Jesus. He could talk about being on the road and having his path altered by Jesus. William Sloan Coffin, who you might remember as a famous preacher who once was the pastor at the Riverside Church in New York City, uh, talked about in a sermon delivered just 10 days after his son had, was killed in a car accident, when he said, as almost all of you know, a week ago last Monday night, driving in a terrible storm, my 24-year-old son Alexander, who enjoyed beating his old man at every game and at every race, beat his father to the grave. Among the healing flood of letters that followed his death was one carrying this wonderful quote from the end of Hemingway's A Farewell to Arms. The world breaks everyone, then some become strong at the broken places. Coffin continued that my own heart, my own broken heart is mending, and largely thanks to so many of you, my dear parishioners, for if in the last week I have learned one lesson, it, it is that love not only begets love, it transmits strength. We, in recent years, have t had a new expression, and when something becomes popular on the internet, we say it goes viral. That has a whole different meaning recently with a literal virus that has ravaged our world and altered our lives in ways that will last long beyond this pandemic. What might it mean to let the love of Jesus be contagious. For we know hate is also contagious. We've seen it this week. We can take, or someone, or some uh, groups of people can take often very legitimate uh, upsets and wounds and turn that anger into more anger and hate. It can beget more of it, but so can love and so can grace. In a few minutes, when we re remember our baptisms, I hope we remember more than something that is mere sentimentality of a, a day perhaps our parents brought us to years ago, or maybe for some of you as adults, a day years ago uh, that was a nice occasion at church or whatever church you were at. But as a reaffirmation of the living work of Christ, not only to repeal, to repair the cracks in your own life,
but to, to be agents of healing in this world. That first baptism of Jesus, and it's interesting in Mark's account, it's the only one where it directly says that John is the one doing the baptism. Many would question whether Jesus even needed, needed to be baptized at all. And we could get lost in the theological thicket of, of that question and questions like it. But perhaps more important is the humility of Jesus. Coming to the Jordan River, a river that was often muddy uh, and very turbid, you could, and, uh, at least some of the pictures I've seen of even recent times, um, you can't see down to the bottom of the, of the uh, river. But perhaps his gathering there with John for his own baptism was a sign of his own humility and the road that was before him. If you, um, if you kind of bring it to a more re modern example, if you watch television and you see um, car commercials, you're often likely going to see um, a lot of commercials touting the latest kind of sports utility vehicle. And I, and I know many of you have them, so I'm not, I'm not um, degrading that. There's a lot of reasons people choose the car as they do. But I thought this was interesting, how much they, um, the, uh, how much those ads will show them going over, say, rugged terrain, um, over boulders and, throw, you know, uh, around animals and throwing up a dirt and gravel. Some of you do that, um, as perhaps you may be out in the, uh, the woods or your farm or your fields or off-road somewhere. But at last, uh, last time this was measured, only 5% of SUVs are ever taken off-road, which means that much, we're much more likely to see them, say, at Tim Hortons uh, than over off-road by a lake in the backwoods of Maine. Why would we have all this pitched to us, uh, at least in the ads, if it's something that is rarely ever needed or used, even in a place like Maine. So often we, we um, uh, think we need something, we think we should be worked up about something, uh, and then we miss, uh, we miss what is really reality. We've missed, we I mean collectively now, missed a lot of reality in this world. And lately it seems we are breaking the, to pieces, each believing they have the truth, each believing the other is dangerous, even less than human. When Jesus went into that river, when he stepped into the mud, unlike um, most of the SUVs in today's world, he did step into that mud. He got down and we might say got his fingers into the dirt and um, into that turbid, uh, muddy river. He got off road, he got into the mud then went out into the wilderness, seeing his own cousin John, and then launched himself into ministry for all of the people of the world. Where we might say you can't wash yourself in dirty water, John baptized Jesus in the water of that river. He knew that the road before Jesus was not going to be clean always or easy. It would mean getting his hands into the dirt, and it meant 
living on the edge and often pointing out indeed the places where our lives are unclean or broken or even shattered. But it wasn't just about a message of turn from those broken places. It was to receive the gift God gives to be the kintsukuroi, the golden repair of the cracks, uh, of the pain, of the hurt, and ha allow it to be, through the work of the Holy Spirit, turned into hope. To allow it to be, through the Holy Spirit, to be turned into promise, to allow it by the work of the Holy Spirit, to allow us to be repaired closer to the image in which we were made, that we might be able to share that with one another. That baptism of Jesus was, you might even say, a, a kind of an anointing and also a, a pledge. Jesus to the work of God and the kingdom of God For us, I hope we might see it similarly. Too often, I think these days, um, we look at baptism as a nice ceremony to have for our kids, perhaps, and not as the beginning of a journey for our life. Perhaps the waters we remember today can be a, golden a reminder of the golden repair that God offers to us in ours. After, uh, it's not even just the events of this week, it just really brought it to the fore, I think. We know our country needs it. We can feel our own state needs it. Wherever you live, if you're wa watching today from somewhere else or even another country, I suspect your, your own location has those very same things. Certainly our individual lives need it. Touch these waters that we remember today as a being in contact with Christ. Let the Holy Spirit work within you. Receive the real gift of God. And not only can you be made whole, you will become hope in this world. But it means... It means being a Christian not just when it's convenient, not just when we're in happy days, but also when the struggle is real. Or when you feel the anger rising, think about how Jesus responded, whether it was in the garden before, as he was being betrayed, whether it was in the rivers, the waters of the Jordan when he was being baptized, when he was traveling with disciples who didn't understand what he was doing or how he could speak or act the way he did. Think about the example of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And you will exhibit when you make that real in your life, indeed, the grace of God. Let us pray. Holy God, once more, let the Holy Spirit, we pray, descend upon us, but more importantly, open our hearts that we might receive the gifts you give. Give us humility that there are answers we don't always know, perspectives we don't all have, and something in the voices of other people we so much need to hear. Whether our love is reciprocated or not, Help us be people of grace, and it is in your name we pray. Amen. We have a number of prayer requests this morning. If you would please keep in your prayers the following persons. Prayers, please, for Debbie and Lou Sharp, for Sheila Bellier, 
Dave and Marcia DeMerchant, Bob Sear, George and Joyce Knorr, for Ralph Ferguson, who will be traveling in a couple of weeks um, for surgery. Uh, ho uh, hold him in your prayers, please, for Marilyn and Gary Langley, Richard and Susan Clark, Emily Robin and James Stewart, Dave Corvo, Megan Cousins, Phyllis Sykes, and Martin Gallant. If you would please keep in your prayers the family of Ronald Netto, who was uh, a friend of this congregation, and uh, some of you have served him communion in recent years. Uh, he uh, died of COVID this last week at the uh, Caribou Nursing Center. For Maddie Swanberg, continued prayers for her and her family. For the family of Luana Reitmeyer, who died this week, uh, this last week on Thursday. Prayers for Marty Nason and his wife, Joy Marty Nason, is a former pastor of this congregation. They both have COVID, and we would like to keep them in our prayers. Prayers for Louis Greenier, for Leland Frost, who continues to deal with the house fire and its aftermath, and ask for our continued prayers. Uh, joy for Pat Dobson, who is on the road to recovery, but no less can continue, uh, continues to need our prayers. And for Bill Ashby today, uh, Bill is the first cousin of Claire Hodgkins, and he uh, has moved into the Presque Isle Rehab Center. Uh, prayers for Bill. I would invite you to hold in your prayers others that you would name in your hearts today. God, we thank you that you hear our prayers, whether they're on the church's prayer list or in our hearts. Help us speak your language, the language of prayer, not because we have some theological degree or standing in the church, but because we are your children, because we are baptized in your name. Help us be able to understand that you will accept us as we are and work with us as we seek to walk in your ways. Surely if you could do it for your disciples with all their doubts and questions and slow recognition of who and what you were, then surely you can do it for us. Like when you taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. I just want to briefly touch on a few announcements, and then we will uh, have a time to remember our baptisms today. Uh, today is the first Sunday we are using our new camera. We're really excited about it, and... We also know we have a lot to learn over the coming several weeks, uh, and there's some additional equipment coming as well. A big thank you, and I put some of that in my note uh, that many of you may have uh, may not have had a chance to read yet, but uh, there's several people there that, and groups of the church to thank. It's been a truly a team effort, and um, we just ask for your patience over these coming weeks as we slowly learn the capabilities and, uh, and build up our repertoire. Um, and how we use it in the sanctuary. Um, but we're excited about what it o makes possible, not only for our worship together in the pandemic, but f for many, many years to come as well. Uh, so do thank God this week for the many gifts of time and talent and treasure that have made this possible for us. Um, Thursday Devotions is resuming uh, f this winter and into Lent. So if you have taken a break because of other events or, or what have you, uh, we'd invite you to tune back in uh, as we have a new run of, of uh, episodes for you. 
Uh, keep an eye out for other announcements in the weekly e-news that uh, Bobby sends out. Usually that comes to you sometime on Monday, uh, and there are a number of things there to, to take note of. I would invite you to, um, uh, to get some container, an open container of, uh, that you can put some water in, maybe a bowl or a dish, whatever it might be. Uh, as we remember our baptisms, if we were in the sanctuary all together, I would invite you to come to the font. Um, the font is here today, and um, if you don't have a container, certainly I invite you to, to pray along with me as, as we share in these words of our liturgy, but I would certainly invite you to have a container at hand um, that you can use here in just a few minutes as well. I will invite you to make use of, of that water. For those of you who might have a hymnal at home, I will be using the baptismal covenant number four, which you can find uh, in your hymnals on page 50 and following. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift, offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. If so, please respond, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please respond with, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, please respond with, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, please respond with, I will. I invite you to join with me if uh, you don't have the words uh, available to you to uh, listen carefully as we touch upon the words of the creeds that help us remember our faith as they are contained in the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, 
he swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sin and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. Amen. I invite you to take, if you have water in front of you, um, to take that bowl or, the, or whatever container you have. Um, if you don't have, a, have water, just enjoy, uh, appreciate God's grace as we, as we remember our baptisms and all the gifts of God. I invite you to remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Just like the Holy Spirit came to Jesus that day at the Jordan River, I wish for you that the Holy Spirit will indeed work within you. Maybe even more importantly that you will recognize that work of the Holy Spirit, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Hear these words of recognition of the faithfulness of our, of our covenant God words that some of you, uh, even to this day, know by heart. We give thanks for all that God has already given us. And as members of the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Before our closing hymn this morning, just want to uh, again acknowledge your many gifts that make possible our ministries. I want to thank you for your tithes and offerings that continue to help us uh, have a, an active ministry during these times. Um, again, my, my deep thanks to you. Our closing, um, our closing hymn today Um, I have to find my note. <laughs> Our closing hymn today is Baptized in Water. Let us remember all God's gifts as we enjoy our closing hymn.
following the benediction this morning, I would invite you to come on over to our virtual coffee hour. An invitation for that was sent uh, last evening. If you are watching today and would like to join in and are not on that email list, if you would uh, send a message, a Facebook message, we'll try to keep an eye out for that and uh, make sure you get that link. I'd like to close uh, f as, uh, as I get to the benediction with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr and thinking about the events of this week, but also thinking about our baptisms too. He said, the church must be reminded that it is not the master or the servant of the state, but rather the conscience of the state. It must be the guide and the critic of the state and never its tool. If the church does not recapture its prophetic zeal, it will become an irrelevant social club without moral or spiritual authority. those kinds of questions are um, good ones to ask because we seek to be, I hope, the conscience of our communities and world and our state, our governments. We do that, be, or we begin that by remembering who we are, the baptized children of God. We come to the waters knowing that sometimes those waters are muddy, sometimes they are uh, frothing about Sometimes we'll be tossed even to and fro, but it also reflects life that is not always neat or clean nor easy. But with God's help, not only will we reclaim the gift given to us at our baptism, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the new beginning and the new day that dawned then and continue on that journey as we draw closer to Christ, to one another, and invite others to join us on that journey. So go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go with the love of God, and go with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.